Welcome, folks, one and all, to the game that I will be playing. So, about a week ago, at the on the last episode of Crossfire, I asked you guys what you'd want to see. A lot of people said PS2 games or any Gundam game was fine. So I figured, why not play the greatest one I could think of? On a completely unrelated thread, we we're also talking about G-Savior for whatever reason. So we're playing this, and yes, I just spoiled what it is. If you didn't read the video title, I'll be surprised. But anyway, folks, welcome to G-Savior. This game is the tie-in game to that movie that was so good it makes people's faces bleed. My own included. But yeah, so this is the tie-in game to that movie that came out before this movie. It came out in 2000, I believe. Or 19... It was like 1999. 2000-ish. But it actually came out like a week before the movie on accident. And this game also has a really interesting problem of referencing stuff that never happened in the movie. Also repeatedly trying to play that opening cutscene again. But it constantly repeats stuff that happened in the movie that didn't happen in the movie. So a lot of this is just a confusing mess. If you need to go read the wiki, uh, the wiki page because it's actually pretty good. Um, the only thing I can say before we start this is uh, the main character from the movie and the main character from this game are two entirely different people. They're just played by very similar voice actors and have very... Actually, they have widely different names, but they sound very much the same. So, there's some interesting part there. But if you haven't seen the movie G-Savior, it was made by the Canadians in uh, the 20th anniversary for Gundam in 1999. It was made in Canada for a Japanese audience. The script is not very good. The script is even worse in English when it was written in English. And the dub is kind of hilarious. So it should be an interesting game. Uh, as far as gameplay goes, this is basically... It wanted to be a rail shooter, but it's not a rail shooter. And this is only in 720 because it absolutely looks horrible in 1080. Like, I can't put it out in 1080. Um, you can only play this in software mode, and you can only do the original resolution. But you can stretch it up to 720 if you want to cheat with PCSX, but yeah... So this will be only in 720, but you'll thank me. If you have motion sickness issues like I do, uh, don't watch this for prolonged periods. It will, it makes me want to throw up and every time I play it. But I bought this when I was in Japan because I hadn't seen G Savior. I had only known there was Gundams in it because it said 20th anniversary Gundam on the front of it. I think I bought it for a dollar, like an American dollar too. Not even yet, yeah, not even 100 yen or 86 or whatever it was back then. But yeah, like, I bought it for an American dollar. That's how cheap it was. And I played it once on my PS2, and it broke my Japanese PS2, and I didn't have enough money to replace it for, like, six months. But it's not very good, and I could probably beat this in about four hours. It's only about eight stages long, and the first one's gonna take me ten minutes at best if I don't stunlock the boss. Um, it's basically, you go on a linear track shooting at enemies, which you automatically... You automatically target enemies and they die in one shot. You have unlimited ammo. They don't even try to dodge either. They occasionally run to the left and you're kind of fucked because it's a Gundam game. But that's about it. Yeah, so let's just start this. Um, I'll, if I remember anything else, I'll say it. But there's about to be a cutscene that'll basically narrate what happened since the movie. Oh, and if you haven't seen the movie, basically Side 8 figures out this food tech. Uh, the Earth got destroyed because everyone kept using it for 100 years because it's 2023. Uh, the Earth gets destroyed and Side 8, which is called Gaia, develops a tech that'll cure their food problems. So Consent, who's Side 256, or 2456, I think it is, because Side 3 is kind of dead or something. Um, Consent, who's basically the Nazis or the communists, I can't tell. Uh, decide that they want it, so they storm it and steal it. Except for Side 6 is one of their colonies, and it makes no sense. Except for they, like, wanted independence or some shit. And we are... Well, in the movie, Mark Curran, who's in the Illuminati, yes, them, decides that he's going to use his new Gundam to stop them, and he basically single-handedly stops them. In this one, we are not Mark Curran. We're Reed Fox, I think his name is. If I'm remembering that correctly. Uh, so, we're Reed Fox. We're also an Illuminati pilot of the G-Savior. 
any reference to each other? Not at all. They just sound similar and look similar. But anyway, let us begin before I try to explain any more of this shit. Alrighty then. Now the fun part it comes in. I'm not translating this at all, by the way. Universal Century, Year 223, Winter. Following its victory over the military aggression of General Garneau of the Congressional Armed Force, CAF, Side Gaia earned its independence as Side 8 and has been endorsed as an autonomous region by the Congress of Settlement Nations, Consent. The event, however, provoked panic among the other regions still governed by the consent. Meanwhile, Colonel Bias, General Garneau's loyal confidant, has been secretly developing Project Raven in a merciless attempt to enhance their military power. Illuminati, a secret group of warriors sworn to restore peace in the troubled Earth terrain, wasn't lying, has launched the Lightning Squad to stop Project Raven. This is also very noisy space. Sadly, it's not Firefly and space isn't silent. Long noisy space. 10 out of 10 storytelling. Wait! 
I don't see why I can't carry out this mission in its current mode. Then let me handle this. Please proceed with the original plan. But... Commander, it would be suicidal to fight without the proper mode setting. I suggest putting G-Savior aside. This is a critical debut of the Lightning Squad's power, isn't it? Without G-Savior, victory will slip through our fingers. We need to cool down and come up with an alternative plan. Please trust me. G-Savior is ready to fight, anytime, anywhere. This is becoming ridiculous. Commander Ben! <laughs> Reed, I have faith in your decision. We will stick to the original plan. It won't be easy, but you can pull it off. I won't disappoint you, Ben. Attention all crew. Report to your position. Prepare to enter Earth's atmosphere. Upon our landing, we deploy an immediate attack. Attention all crew. The countdown begins now. Five, four, three, two, one. The operation has begun. Upon landing on Earth, our mission is to attack and seize the spaceport from the military and return its control to the citizens of Earth. This is the map of the location where the mission will take place. Let me fill in the details. The target is the spaceport located on the outskirts of Rio. This area is presently controlled by the CAF, and a large number of suits have been spotted in the area. Reed's G-Savior will take point on the marine route and will initiate penetration at the base. He will sweep the outpost of our enemies and proceed to our final target, the control terminal, and destroy their suit sentry. At the same moment, our Allied Army will penetrate the base, seizing each facility. This is the operation in brief. The mothership will initiate a cover fire to secure your route. Reed, you'll have to traverse the cover fire while attempting to penetrate the base. Sounds like one hell of a fortress. Seamless, sheltered facilities guarded by a bunch of suits. Reed, don't underestimate their ability. Understand? Reed, please do a final systems check of your suit. Yes, ma'am. Due to a system error, G Savior is not outfitted for terrain mode. His suit is still in space mode as it was guarding the spaceship assembly. G Savior's space mode needs thinner armor, but also needs higher maneuverability. The ability to dodge enemy fire in space mode must be very high. Alright, so they say this has higher maneuverability. Complete fucking bullshit. Like, literally every other suit's a lot better than this. This is the weakest suit in the game. Or at least I think it's the weakest suit. Uh, I think the terrain form's actually a little bit weaker than it. But anyway, yeah, there aren't any more cutscenes for like five minutes. But this whole stage will take about five minutes, most likely. Especially the boss, which is laughably easy. Okay, that's how you do it. I was trying to figure it out. You had to press any other button. Reed, Never mind. Be aware that we'll initiate the bombing 10 seconds after your departure. Please try to avoid contact with friendly fire. Get out of the way. G-Saker is taking off. You're not dedicated unless you're willing to bomb your own position. I think that's maxim 32? Maybe 37. But, yeah, so, we get, 
I have to show you that guys this cool ability that I will literally never use as soon as it's done loading. Oh great, he's using all our thrust. God damn it. You'll get what I mean by that in a second. Alright, so it doesn't really tell you how to play, it just kind of throws you in there. But, what I'm talking about is, there's this ability, right? I'm emulating this, if you haven't guessed. Um, I can play it on my PS2, but I can't record PS2 right now due to reasons. But there's this ability, right? It... It looks cool, it doesn't do anything, and it artifacts the fuck out of the screen. But, yeah, that actually gets you killed more than it helps. So, you press L1 to pull up your shield. You'll literally have your shield up all the goddamn time. And also, um, what I was talking about about hovering, is, or about boost, is we can hover, right, and it makes it go fast. It lasts for about 30 seconds altogether. And this is the gameplay. This is why I say it's a rail shooter without rails. Yep, and now we're at a boost. So we have to run around everywhere. If you don't have boost, you get shot constantly. If you have boost, you can dodge them just barely. And you have a gun with unlimited ammo! Uh, those are called Bigus or something like that. They're the main antagonist that Consent uses for like 15 minutes. They kinda look cool, but they're basically the Zakus of this game. But yeah, so what you wanna do is you wanna go in spurts to avoid getting shot at, but also not waste your hover. You shoot them once and you have unlimited ammo. You do have a accuracy monitor, so I won't waste a ton of it, but there's really no point. Come on now. Whoops. I'm really bad at this because the targeting's automatic, and there's no way to change the targeting, which really annoys me. And I'm not missing anyone, am I? Whoops, I wasted too much. Oh, and you can't use the, a the right analog stick to look around. You have to do it on your own, and it's really goddamn clunky. And they really want you to go in one direction, but I was waiting for my boost to come back. I forgot to use my shield there. I could have took a shitload of damage by not being careful. But as long as you have your shield up, you're fine. And it regenerates HP, so, you know, why not use it? But yeah, this is the game. Fun, right? Leisurely run to the left to avoid enemy fire. Because if you run to the right, they'll hit you. Weird coincidence in all Gundam games ever. And now we're to our first door. Okay, so there is a melee mechanic in this game. It's just laughably bad. Yeah, okay, I can't do it here, but basically you like, it's like Crossfire bad, except for Crossfire was better. We'll get, when we get to the second boss, I'll show it to you. It's just terrible. But for now, we'll just be using our guns for a while. All right, and we've already shut down, I think it's nine mobile suits. Remember that a Zaku costs as much as a Musai. Imagine how much these things cost. And we shot down 10 of them in like 10 seconds. If I'm looking correctly, I'm on three minutes of actual gameplay so far. And like 15 of cutscene. Whoops. Yeah, fine. Fuck you. I wanted to get away from this gun first, but oh well. I killed you, damn it. But yeah, notice how my shield's taking damage, right? There, it's healed. And, yeah, I'm already starting to get queasy. This is fun. Ugh. It's like you move, but it doesn't feel like you move, and it just... Yeah. I'm definitely putting up a motion sickness warning in the beginning of this video. Come on, quit running. Wasted, ha like, 1% of my accuracy.
And it's easier to turn if you don't have your your hover on. That's why I keep stopping hovering to turn. Oh, did I miss someone? I did. Come on, quit hovering, damn it. Er, not hovering, moving. You guys better not hover. Alright. And this is actually the first boss. So, this boss is laughably easy. Though there is a cutscene after this. But this boss is really fucking easy. MS Spearhead. Who are they? Their suits are surprisingly strong. <laughs> so, all the same, you will never defeat me. I will never defeat you. This is literally how you fight him. He's a melee fighter, so he charges directly at you. Sometimes you have to run up on him, though, because he gets out of, like, your shots disappear before they reach him. But this is how you fight the first boss. Especially if you don't want to take any damage. And you want to, like, drastically increase your accuracy score. Oops, I wasted two shots there. My bad. I can shoot a gun! Also, it artifacted a little bit there, too. I gotta wonder if that's in the original game or not. I don't think it is, but it might be. And those are J-Saviors. Those are the mass production version of the G-Savior. They're basically double Zeta, or mass production double Zetas, whereas we're in, like, the F-91. Yeah. We didn't do very well, but oh well. I only got a 55% hit chance, and I didn't take any damage, surprising. And I only shot down 75%. Well done. I am satisfied with your performance, but you have the potential to do even better. Good luck on your next mission. Great performance. You control your suit with such dexterity. Mm -hmm. I wish you the best of luck in your next mission. Lenny face. 